pursuit of happiness. And we're looking at the Beatitudes in the Gospel of Matthew. And Jesus gives eight declarations. He says, blessed are, happy are those. Uh, God blesses those. He, and he gives this. And the first four have to do with our relationship with God. The last four is our relationship with mankind, with one another. And that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at our relationship with each other. And it says, Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Another version says, happy are the merciful, for they will have mercy shown to them. Or blessed are the merciful. So, Father, I just pray that we can understand what you have for us, what you want for us, and that we would live it out to your glory and to our help. And I pray this in Christ's name, amen. Mercy. It's really interesting how you and I really need it. It's, it's um, you get what you give. If you, you reap what you sow. What you pour out is what you're going to get back. And people could be incredibly critical if you criticize people, you're going to be criticized. If you're hard on people, you're going to be, they're going to be real hard on you. But if you're merciful, you're going to receive mercy. And it's really important that we treat people the right way <clears throat> and to truly be merciful. So I want to start off by asking the question, what is the meaning of mercy? Because mercy is an action of love. It's love in action. It's literally something you carry out. It's not an attitude. It's not a feeling. It's truly something that you have to show. It's something that you actually do. It's doing something. It's actually putting it into play, showing and demonstrating the love of God, showing and demonstrating love and forgiveness, showing and demonstrating compassion, and, and just really touching a person's life. In the book of Psalm 145, verse 8, it says, The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. So it's really important that we understand that. It's important that, that God is saying he's merciful, but he's very compassionate. God said he looked at the crowds with compassion. He, he saw them as a people as without a shepherd, sheep without a shepherd. In other words, we're just lost. We're, we're needing direction. We're needing protection. And, and he's a merciful God that gives that and shows that. And we've got to understand that. So when we embrace that and we really embrace mercy, it's so we're going to understand that we can help each other and minister to each other with great tender care. And so I want to talk about the marks of mercy, how you really see it in action and some things that we have to do. And I want to, I want to focus on just four things that, that we can really see in the scripture that how mercy helps us minister to people and how we can see that you're a person of mercy. And the very first one is this, that, that if I'm merciful, if you're merciful, if we're merciful, I'm going to be patient with those who are peculiar. I'm going to be patient with peculiar people. How many of you know someone that's peculiar? A little weird. Don't point them out, please. If you don't know of anyone, you're probably that person, see? That's why. All of us have someone a little different. They are kind of a taco short of a combination plate. You know what I'm talking about? They're kind of just not there. I don't mean weird. I just mean weird. They're just kind of weirdos. And, and, and sometimes some people get really impatient and get irritated, and they treat weirdos mean. But you know what God says? Man, I want you to be compassionate. I want you to show loving tenderness and care. They might be obnoxious. They might be weird. But the Bible says he tells us how to deal with people like this. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14, he says, Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. There's some people that are just straight out lazy. Haven't you ever met any lazy people? You might work with them. While you're there doing the work, hey, come on, we got to do this. They're going, oh, I can't believe we have to move all that. And you're there, yeah, yeah, why don't you get moving and help me? But man, look at all that. Golly, can you believe that? And you're like, oh my goodness gracious. You want to get them and move them. You know what I mean? But instead it says, be, be, be patient, be merciful. It says, encourage those who are timid. 
You're there, come on, step up. No, no, no. Come on, you're a salesman, step up. Oh, no, no, I can't. I can't talk, I can't. You're a phone solicitor, you've got to talk. And they're all timid, oh my gosh, I, I don't know if I could do that. Encourage them, it says take tender care of those who are weak. All of us know somebody who's weak. All of us know who somebody's a little weird. All of us know who somebody that just has gone through a difficult time and, and you're just encouraging. It says, be patient with everyone. So God is saying he wants us to be patient. He wants us to be kind. He wants us to show this everlasting love. And we don't know how to do that sometimes. But if you look into their background, if you get to know people, you'll find out that everyone has a story. Everyone has a story. What do they say? Don't criticize someone until you walk through their shoes for two miles. Why? Because once you start finding out about someone, you're like, what? Wait, wait, what? You lost everything? Wait, I can't believe this. Everything was burnt in a fire? Wait, what? In a flood? Your house flooded? The pipe busted? And you were gone for four days? Oh, my goodness. Or what? Your husband just walked out on you? Or what? You, your child just died? What? Your, man, when you start finding out their story and you find out that they grew up abused and they were beaten and they were raped or they were hurt or they were, man, you understand why they are how they are. You start understanding their peculiarity and their peculiar behavior and you go, well, no wonder they're like that. I'd be weird too. They're scared to death. They're, they're safeguarding themselves. They're protecting themselves. They're shielding themselves. It's really, really hard. And so many times we only look at the outward behavior, the goofiness, the little weirdness, the kind of idiosyncrasies that they do that are kind of just different from you. But man, if you understand it, you'll find out, oh my goodness gracious. That's why it says in Romans chapter 15, verse 7, Therefore, accept each other just as Christ has accepted you so that God will be given glory. He says, accept one another. Accept one another. Because you know what? People are broken. People are hurting. And it's so important that we reach out to them and reach into them and we really help them in the power of God. Another way that we show mercy and we really show the mark of mercy in our life, that, that if I'm a merciful person, I forgive those who have fallen. I have forgiven those who have fallen. You know what? There's a lot of people that are not very forgiving. Haven't you ever met them? They're just like, man, they can't wait for you to fall. And you fall, and they go, ha, 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 oh, Mr. High and Mighty. Uh, did you hear about Pastor so-and-so? Did you hear about that leader? Oh, yeah, they were all, all, all that. Now look at them. Ha, ha, ha. Shame on you. Shame on you. You ought to be broken that they fell. You ought to be broken that they're not doing good. You ought to be broken that they're hurting. Help them, encourage them, get back on their feet. Help them, encourage them, say, help. How do we help? I want to help you. I want to help you. We've got to be able to get beyond that. Man, there's some people that, man, they don't ever let go. Man, how do you, when someone falls, do you rub it in or do you rub it out? Do you hurt them with it or do you help them to get out of it? Because it, how we minister to people, how we extend love and grace, how we extend mercy is huge. Man, there's some people that it's like, you don't understand my husband hurt me 38 years ago. But he repented. He said he was sorry. But 38 years ago, you don't know what he did. No, I don't. I don't, but he said he was sorry and he's trying to make it right. 38 years I've carried this. Well, try to let it go. You don't understand. Man, I've been with people like that. It's hard because they can't see. They need mercy. Colossians chapter 3 verse 13 says, Make allowance for each other's faults. How many of you know that everyone in this room has a fault? Yeah, it's only 12 of us admit it. The rest of you are so messed up, you don't even know you're messed up. Yeah. Now, kidding aside, all of us have faults. All of us are going to mess up. And it says, it says right there, allow for each other's faults and forgive one another, who, uh, and forgive anyone, rather, who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, and you must forgive others. And he's saying, you know what? 
I said, we've got to extend mercy. We've got to extend mercy. It's like this lady that bought a dress and she took it back to the store and just says, I just, I want to bring this back. And the manager goes, well, what's wrong with it, man? He goes, this, this dress did not do me justice. He goes, lady, you don't need justice. You need mercy. You know, yeah. That's messed up, man. That's just messed up. Someone shared that joke. I just had to work it in. But see, all kidding aside, all kidding aside, some of us really do need mercy extended to us. And we don't even understand that. We don't understand that. And we've got to understand, I, we need to be patient when someone falls. We need to be patient. Are you quick to point your finger or are you quick to extend a helping hand? Which one are you? Hopefully you're showing love and mercy, tenderness and forgiveness. Another mark of mercy is that if you're a merciful person, I'm going to help those who are hurting. We're going to help the hurting. We're going to help them. We're going to minister to them. We're going to stop, stop our world to help them to really reach into their life. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 27, it says, do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it's in your power to help them. He's saying, in other words, help them. If you have the power to help, help. If you have the power to minister to them, minister. Man, if you have cold water, give it to them if they need it. If you have a taco in your hand and they're hungry, give them a taco. <laughs> it's like, man, share. You know, tacos are, are Chinese food, right? Yeah, ya te toca tu taquito. No, I'm sorry, okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you don't understand Spanish, I'm sorry. It just doesn't translate good. But give them a taco. Give them whatever. Get them hungry. Minister to them. Help them. Pour yourself out. Help if you can. In 1 John chapter 3, verse... 17 and 18, it says, if someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other, but let's show the truth by our actions. It's saying, put your money where your mouth is. In other words, show them. Don't just walk right past them. There's a man by the name of, or, or there was a man by the name of John Wesley. He was a great, great man of God who, he, he actually started the Methodist church and, and he started many churches, just a great man of God. And, and, and this was his motto. I thought it was really interesting. He says, do all the good that you can by all the means that you can and all the ways that you can and all the places that you can at all the times that you can to all the people that you can as long as you can. And I thought, ooh, that'll preach, man. That's just good. That's just good. We need to really be able to reach out and touch lives and impact lives and, and really help to really be a witness for the Lord, not just an, a standby, a stand, an innocent bystander that just watches things go by, but you don't do anything about it. We've got to make a difference. You remember the story of the Good Samaritan? Man, the religious leaders walked right past them. The robbers beat him down, but the Good Samaritan came. He wasn't even the same race. He wasn't the same religion. Matter of fact, he was a Samaritan. The guy that got beat up was a Jew. They didn't even talk to each other. Jews and Samaritans didn't like each other. And you know what he did? He picked him up, put him on his donkey, took him to the Holiday Inn, said, here's my credit card. Whatever you need, take care of. I'll be back later to pay all the bill. Make it in full. In other words, I'm going to do what I need to to help this guy out because he's broken and hurting and mercy shows love. It's love in action. I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to help him. I'm going to minister to him. In the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 22, it says, be merciful to those who doubt. It says, and you must show mercy to those who whose faith is wavering. In other words, when someone's doubting, when someone's wavering, and they're kind of wondering, and they're questioning, and when they're broken, and when they're hurting, people question and go, does God even care? And if you come along and all of a sudden you say, I love you, they go, oh my gosh, God cares. But if you're calling yourself a Christian and you just walk right past them, they go, see, God doesn't care. Because there are people of God, they don't care. Nobody cares. I don't care. No, you don't care. Nobody cares. And before you know it, you're falling apart, you're broken, and you're hurting, and you're just empty. 
And another mark of mercy, that if I'm merciful, I do good to my enemies. I do good to my enemies. Look what he says in Luke chapter 6. Jesus is talking there and he says, and if you do good only to those who do good to you, why should you get credit? Even sinners do that much. So he's saying, what's the big deal if you treat people good that treat you good and you're good buddies? Well, even sinners do that. So he goes, I'm going to step it up. I'm going to challenge you. And he goes to verse 35 and 36, and look what he says. Love your enemies. Now let's just stop right there. He's saying, love your enemies. Now he's not saying, love the people who you love, but you're kind of bugged with right now. You know, you love your wife, you love your husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, your kids, or whatever, your people, co-workers. You already know them. You really care about them, but you're kind of bugged with them. And so you love them, but you're bugged. But they're not really, you know, he's saying love your enemies. Your enemies. The people that have stabbed you, not just in the back, but in your face. The people that came and hurt you and messed you over. Your enemies. Are you with me? Saying love. Your enemies. Do good to them. Lend to them without expecting to be repaid. Then your reward from heaven will be very great. And you will truly be acting as children of the Most High. For he is kind to those who are unthankful and wicked. You must be compassionate. Just, just as your father is compassionate, saying, love your enemies, love them and care for them. That's heavy duty, man. That's love in action. That's mercy in action. He's saying, I want you to go beyond the bar. I want you to go beyond what your, the norm is. I want you to be able to show mercy where mercy isn't even due. Because that's what, what was extended to us, Amen. And so he wants us to really have mercy, to be filled with compassion and love, because that's mercy, and, and that's tough to do. But with the help of the Lord, you will experience the real power of mercy, and you will see the marks of mercy in your life. And it brings me to the motivations of mercy, the motives of mercy. And the things that motivate you, the things that motivate me, is, is number one, because God has shown us mercy. God, our Heavenly Father, He has shown us mercy. He's watched over us. He cares for us. He loves us. He adores us. Man, listen to me. Look, my, I have grandchildren, okay? And my number two grandchild is 10 years old. And he got a really rare disease, something you don't even get hardly nowadays. He got scarlet fever. And he was just diagnosed with scarlet fever this past week. So he's quarantined. I mean, poor little guy, you know, he's in a room by himself. We're feeding him. All the, the only thing we could give him is tortillas, because that's the only thing that slides under the door. You know, <laughs> pobrecito. <laughs> so we're giving him food, OK? <laughs> but andale, mijo. Here, nada tortilla. We'll even put some cheese on it this time, you know? <laughs> so, but, but you know what? I, he's my buddy, man. We, I, I pick him up at school. I get to see him. I haven't got to see him now for three days, going on four. And I'm like, man, I miss him. I want to see him. I'm like, wow, what a drag. You know, I, I was out of town, and I haven't been able to see him. And I'm like, pobrecito. And I was thinking about God's love for us. Jesus Christ, who's seated at the right hand of the Father, said, I love these people so much, son, I want you to leave the presence of heaven where you're the king of glory. You're, you're on the throne of, of, of eternity. And I want you to leave to go get my people, make it possible for them to get to heaven. So I'm going to give my only begotten son. I'm going to release my only son. I'm going to give my son to this lost world. I'm going to release this son of mine I, man, to be away from him and know that he was coming to earth to be killed by us because of our sin. I'm like, I wouldn't be able to comprehend that. That's love. And that's the mercy he has for us. 
And in Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, he says, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never be, get into the kingdom of heaven. He said, I want you to be like children. Children can really be brats and fight over everything, but they also make up right away, don't they? I always say in every human being, there's a child. And in grown-ups, you see this. Whether you're in a relationship or not, you're just... But you know that sometimes we act like little brats. I mean, think of people you work with. Think of people you live with. They're grown-ups, and they act like little brats. Gandhi, they took a 14-minute break. <laughs> well, then I only got 14. They got 22 minutes. Oh, grow up. Are you with me? They start whining about everything. That's my remote control. Oh my gosh, okay, Cindy, take it back. You know, it's like, God. See, she's showing me mercy right now. She's not up here beating me up. Cindy's my wife, for those of you that don't know, okay. But all kidding aside, we gotta remember his mercy, how amazing it is. In spite of our sin, he extends mercy. In, sp in spite of what we've done, he extends mercy. I, I'm by far a perfect person. I've hurt people. And you know what? I've, I've had to go in with my tail between my legs and going, I'm sorry my wife or my children or people I work with or people I love, people I do life with have chose to forgive me. I, I sure don't intend to go out and hurt people, but I have. And, and we tend to judge people by their worst faults. Have you ever noticed that? At their worst, we go, look at them, look at them. And we judge ourselves by our best faults. <laughs> Like, oh, well, I only messed up a little bit. I mean, golly. <laughs> it's like, man. Or we judge ourselves by our best intentions. Well, I, I meant well. It's not like I, I meant to hurt you. I, my intentions were good. See, we need to be merciful. You know why? Because God has extended mercy. Another thing we need to do is we, we really show mercy because... We're going to need more mercy in the future. How many of you know that you're probably going to mess up again in the future? Any of you? Yeah. I'm not planning on messing up. I'm not planning on hurting anybody. But I've, I'm probably going to mess up again. It's not like we intend I'm going to get you. Well, I guess there are some people that do that and you shouldn't. But man, I, I know that, golly, I'm probably going to have to ask my wife again. I'm sorry, Cindy, forgive me. I'm sorry, kids, forgive me. I'm sorry, friends. I'm sorry, people. Or Because we mess up. Man. We need to extend mercy because we're going to need mercy in the future. Look at the book of James chapter 2, verse 13. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you have been merciful, God will be merciful when he judges you. Man, isn't that awesome? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He's going to be merciful to us. He's going to extend the mercy that we extend. Now, look, Jesus taught us how to pray, but I don't think we just listen to what he said. We don't take it serious. We just kind of rush through prayer. But he even said, look, remember the Lord's Prayer? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who, what? Trespass against us. Now, have you really heard of what you're really saying? You're saying, forgive me as I forgive. Forgive me my transgressions. Forgive those as you have forgiven me. That's heavy. I'm supposed to forgive like God forgives. Holy cow, that's hard. But he says, if I don't forgive, then I'm not forgiven. Forgive our debtors. 
Forgive us our debts. Forgive us our transgressions as we forgive those who trespass against us. Man. So we need to get with the program because it's like, wow, I'm supposed to be forgiving. It's like, look, haven't you ever met people who don't forgive? Oh, my goodness gracious. They're, they're just miserable people. And it brings me to the last thing I want to say, that if you really have a motive to forgive, it's because it makes us happy. It makes us happy. I don't know if you, any of you remember that little chorus way, way back in the dark ages. I'm so happy, and here's the reason why. Jesus took my sins away. Hey, you know, yeah. Man, that's reason to be happy. I'll be honest with you, man. I've met people who are... Bitter people. Haven't you ever met bitter people? Bitter people. Bitter, bitter, bitter. I mean, they're mad. Are they going to be there? I'm not going to go if they're going. God, calm down. Just go. I'm not going to be there. And the other people are there at the barbecue all happy, having a hamburger. They're eating, eating, they're even eating the hamburger you were supposed to eat. Can I have seconds? Yeah, Charlie didn't come because he's all mad. Go ahead and eat Charlie's. Yeah, Susie didn't come. She's still all mad. Go ahead and eat Susie's hamburger. And you're all there having a good time, and they're at home like, I believe they are, and they're even eating my hamburger. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, forgive. Man, people that are, are unforgiving are not happy people. They're not. They're just miserable. They're going through life all sourpuss. Look like they've been sucking on a lemon all day long. <laughs> you know people like that. They're just angry. They're angry. Hey, we're going to go over to the house. Who's going? Oh, man. Well, just, well, you know, I don't know. Why don't, okay, we're not going there. Why don't we all go for a ride? Who's going to go in the ride? Whose car? Who am I going to have to sit next to? How about if we put you in the trunk? <laughs> man, it's like you're, you're, you're afraid. They're bitter. They're angry. Look what it says in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 17. Your kindness will reward you, but your cruelty will destroy you. See, you're the one that benefits. When you're really nice, you're the one that benefits. Haven't you ever just been nice to somebody just because? Yeah. You just see someone hurting, you go, hey, man, God bless you, and you help them out. They're like, thank you, thank you. And you're like, don't mention it, but you feel like, yeah, man, I helped somebody out today. That is so cool. I helped them out. I did something good today. And my, my oldest grandson, he's best friends with my next door neighbor. My next door neighbor is 76. And they tell each other, they, they literally hold on to each other. He goes, he's my best friend. And, they, and he's always over there. He goes, Grandpa, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to go help Troy. He needs my help. I'm going, why don't you ever help me? <laughs> I need <laughs> I need help. <laughs> but you know what? He's just kind to him. He's just kind. And, and Troy goes, Pastor, Isaiah's my best friend. And Isaiah's all proud. Now he's as, as tall as him. So he's like, hey, Troy, I'm as tall as you now. Do you know that? Yeah. Just, they have a good friendship. You know why? Because of mercy and tenderness. And Isaiah is all happy about it because he extends it and it blesses him. See, some of us aren't there because you're saying, see, yeah, that's easy for you to say. But see, I really encourage you by starting by experiencing God's mercy firsthand, by receiving his love and forgiveness, by receiving his grace and his mercy. But then to extend it. Man, if, if you don't know Jesus Christ, that's why you're so broken because you have all these broken pieces and he's the only one. He, he's the healer of the broken heart. He could put the pieces back together. You see, all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again. But... The king can. 
The king's horses and the king's men couldn't, but the king can. Let him heal your wounds. So if you don't know Jesus Christ today, I, I just want to start there. Receive his mercy. Receive his mercy. If you've never surrendered your life to him and you want to, just say, you know what, that's me. I, I've never done that. I want to do that today. Is there anyone here? Just raise your hand. Say, I would love that. I would love to do that I, so we could pray. Amen. Is that back in the room back there? Yeah. Wave to me if that's a hand that's up. Okay. Praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Anyone else? Well, I just want to pray with you. Hey, stand up back there. I'm going to pray with you. Pray with me, would you?